Welcome to the Happiness Podcast. I'm Dr. Robert Puff. Every morning that I get up, the first thing that I'll do to put in my tummy is I'll make myself a green smoothie. I put kale, lettuce, spinach in there, add some water to make it more liquidy. Then I put in some fruit, apples, pears, oranges, kiwi, celery, tomatoes, to make it taste really good. And all of that's organic and it's fresh and it's wonderful. And I drink a big glass of it and my body says, thank you. But what if instead I was waking up every morning and I went down to the local donut shop and made sure I had a lot of donuts in my house and that's what I woke up to, those sugary, sweet donuts. My taste buds may say thank you, but my body would not be pleased because I would not be feeding my body good nutritional food. And then in the long term, it would have a devastating effect on me. I think this makes sense. For most of us, what we feed our body affects our body and it has long-term effects if we keep doing things that are destructive for our bodies. But what about our souls? What about our spirit? What about our minds? Does it make any difference what we feed our soul all day long? I think we'll decide today that it does. And we're also gonna explore ways to make sure we're feeding our souls good stuff. So what do I mean by feeding our souls? How do we feed our souls good things? And then how do we decide what is good for our souls? Well, that's what we're gonna explore today. Well, just like whatever we put in our mouths and we eat affects our body, in the exact same way, everything we expose ourselves to externally in our internal dialogue about what we're being exposed to affects us also. It affects the quality and the happiness of our souls. Well, the first point I wanna make is that everything matters. Nothing doesn't matter. Everything we expose ourselves to, every type of internal dialogue we have about what we expose ourselves to matters, period. It's just like everything we eat matters, period. It may be good for us, it may be bad for us, but it matters. Whatever we're eating matters, whatever we expose ourselves to, and how we have an internal dialogue about that matters also. So the question to ask ourselves is, what are we exposing ourselves to all day long? I really believe there's a tendency to think, this doesn't matter, it's really not that important. For example, coming home and having french fries and a dessert every day may seem like it's not that big a deal, Dr. Puff. And the truth is, once in a while, it isn't that big a deal. But every single day, day after day, will make our bodies change and will cause us to be a lot less healthy. In the exact same way, little things, it is true, may not matter, but if we expose ourselves to them over and over again, it's going to have an impact on us no matter who we are. So if we come home at the end of a long day, say, I just need to relax and watch some mindless television or spend some time on my phone watching, in quotes, entertaining TikToks or YouTube videos for hours and say, it's no big deal. There are other people, they're doing goofy things. How does it affect me? Everything affects our soul. So we ask ourselves, is this feeding my soul? Might it be better for me to go for a walk stay outside for a while, go watch a sunset, connect with some good friends, have some really beautiful conversations, do things outdoors, read a good book, find things that feed our soul because everything matters. Everything does. And it's true. Little things once in a while are not that big a deal. It's like having a dessert once or twice a week or coming home on the weekend and having a glass of wine against perhaps once or twice a week not a big deal. But if we do it daily, if we do it recurrently, it is a big deal. All of us get that. But it's the same way with what we expose ourselves to all day long. It matters. And once we really deeply believe that, then throughout the day we can ask ourselves, okay, I have a half an hour free. How do I want to feed my soul? Do I want to get on my phone and watch some mindless videos? Or do I instead want to stop and listen to a really encouraging, inspirational podcast or watch an engaging, 
educational video or documentary instead. We have choices all day long to feed our soul. And the question is, what are we feeding our souls? Because we're feeding our souls. And we just have to ask ourselves, is this good for my soul? Is it an uplifting? Is it positive? Is it loving? Is it inspirational? Is it helping me grow as a human being? Or is it mindless entertainment that feels like it's harmless? But we have to ask ourselves, is it? Because if it's not feeding our souls, then it's doing something else. And since everything matters, and I hope that makes sense by now, if everything matters, we have to ask ourselves, okay, I just spent the last 20 minutes doing this activity. Was it feeding my soul or was it tearing down my soul? Because all day long, we're doing something to our souls. And yes, in the short run, doing something once in a while may not be that big a deal. For example, coming home and saying, I just want a glass of wine not a big deal but don't we all know people perhaps hundreds of people that went down that path and they had a glass of wine then it was two then it was a bottle then it was two and now they struggle with severe alcoholism and have incredible health problems and their lives are a mess i think we all know people like that it's sad it's a dark path to go down so we have to be careful because we're not stronger than them. We don't have more willpower. We just have to realize that everything feeds our soul. And is it feeding our soul in a good way, in an uplifting way? Or is it feeding our souls in a negative way that perhaps in the long run may lead to consequences that we don't really want to face? But we're not thinking about them. We're not thinking about how this could have consequences for my future well-being. And if we begin to think about, okay, I get it. It makes sense. Everything I do matters. So what if instead we spend a lot of time feeding our soul good things, uplifting things, loving things, positive things, and stay away from negativity, harmful things, things that are cruel, things that are mean, things that tear us down and other people down. Might we not find that our lives will begin to get better? But there's two ways in which we feed our souls. And let's talk about these two ways because they're both very important. One will be obvious, but the other one is far more subtle. The obvious one is what we're exposing ourselves to, what we watch on television, what we spend our time surfing on our phones, what conversations we have, who we spend our time with at work, our friends, what we do on the weekends. All that feeds our soul. And we ask ourselves, Am I exposing myself to things that are good for my soul or things that are tearing my soul down? Because in the short run, it may not seem like that big a deal, but we all know people that in the short run, the long run turned out very dark. I remember when I was in graduate school, I came out to California to finish up my doctorate. And at my school, there were some homeless people that lived in the area. And my professor of psychopathology, he was talking one day about people's lives. And he said, do you know that every homeless person that is around here at one point had a mother, had a father, had someone that loved them. And they were a little innocent child. And now they're living on the street. So there's a tendency to think that they're just bad people. They've always been bad. That is not true. What happens with it is, we end up in dark places because we feed our souls dark things and it has consequences. I know it feels like it's not that big a deal. I'm not killing that person on this video game. I'm pretending to do it. It may not feel like that big a deal. In the short run, it probably isn't. But doing it day after day after day is going to affect our soul. So we have to ask ourselves, Am I having desserts maybe once or twice a week? Or is my meal every day all sweets and desserts? Because feeding our souls is exactly like that. What we expose ourselves to matters. So the trick is, throughout the day, we ask ourselves, is this good for my soul? Is this feeding my soul? Or is this activity I'm engaging in, perhaps 20 minutes, an hour or two, something that's tearing down my soul? 
and exposing me to things that are dark, that are negative, and are going to have an impact on my soul. But the second thing we have to watch that is feeding our soul, which is going to be trickier, is what internal dialogue am I having to what I'm being exposed to in the world? Let's say, for example, we're driving and we're enjoying ourselves and everything's going fine and someone cuts us off. We say, oh, they must be in a hurry. So I'll give them a little space and let them go ahead of me. Or we could get angry, we get upset, we could start calling them names. We could say in our head, they're a horrible human being and the world is full of horrible human beings and I hate humanity, I hate my life. See the difference there? A simple letting them go by versus creating this internal dialogue of darkness and despair. We do that all day long. Another example might be we're out and about and we see someone who looks differently than us for whatever reason, their skin color, their weight, the way they're dressed. In our minds, we could say, wow, what's wrong with them? They're disgusting. I hate people like them. Or we could say, huh, they're different. That's cool. What do I like about them? I love their eyes. I like the way their hair looks. It's an engagement with our thoughts. Our thoughts are going on pretty much all day long. And we have to begin to observe those thoughts and ask ourselves, are we engaging with the world in a positive, uplifting way? Or are we engaging with the world in a negative, defensive way? And again, like always, a little bit of that may be okay. But mostly, we want to have a lot of positivity, sunshine, and happiness in our life. Because that's what people do whose lives are going well. They see the world as a cup half full, not half empty. And when we do that, life goes so much better. But it's tricky because that internal dialogue, it's so much going on all day long. A lot of times, even though it's loud and clear, we just don't even notice it. So we have to begin to pay attention. What are we evaluating our world throughout the day? Is it positive? Is it loving? Is it kind? Or is it negative? Is it dark? Because if it is dark, our hearts are going to turn dark too. Our souls are going to begin to feel the heaviness of the world that we've created, not that exists. Because what matters is what we create in our minds. The person who is doing well sees the world as a beautiful place. The person who's not doing well through years of conditioning and exposing themselves and feeding their souls of negativity now see the world as a very dark place. And they live in the exact same world. It really is like that. So to reiterate, what are we feeding our souls? We want to feed our souls good, positive, uplifting, just things that make our hearts feel happy and joyful. That one's going to make sense. It may not be easy to do, but that one's going to make sense. What's going to be the harder part is paying attention to our thoughts and how we interpret the world that we live in. When we begin to be aware of our thoughts and realize, oh, I'm actually having a lot of negativity in my thoughts, then we begin to work on changing that, shifting it, just seeing it differently, saying something different in our minds. And with time, our thoughts will change as we work on it, because it's just habits, we can change our internal thoughts and our dialogue with the world. And what we'll find is, if we feed our souls good things, we will have a good life. And we all can have that. It does take work. It does take effort. But the end results are so wonderful. A happy, joyful life. No matter what's going on. Because what's going on is how we see it. And we will begin to see the world with eyes of happiness, joy, and peace. Thank you for joining me on the Happiness Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the podcast, please go to happinesspodcast.org. And until next time, accept what is, love what is.